Good afternoon. I first start off with God's name, compassionate and merciful. And I'd like to first praise God and thank God for this opportunity to address you all this evening and for us to have a conversation and God willing uh, clarify uh, some misconceptions about uh, Muslims and Islam as well as perhaps highlight some uh, some potential areas or some areas of conflict that, were, that are within the Muslim world so that we can better uh, have some understanding about some current situations that are going on in the world right now. <clears throat> there are five, really six major misconceptions that I would like to briefly touch on before we open up for questions and answers. And I'll read those to you and then uh, go into those uh, more in depth. The first misconception that will be addressed this afternoon is that Islam is incompatible with Judeo-Christian values and democracy. Two, Muslims do not believe in Jesus Christ. Three, that Arab and Muslim are synonymous, meaning that they're the same thing or they can be used interchangeably. Four, that jihad means holy war. Five, that top Muslim scholars have not denounced terrorism and the horrific attacks of 9-11 at the World Trade Center and also at the Pentagon. And six, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict being a war between Islam and the Jewish faith or the Jewish religion. Going back to point one of Islam being incompatible with Judeo-Christian values and democracy, the first misconception, I would like to first go and describe to you or to give you some type of brief information about what Islam is to Muslims and what it is to be a Muslim. And the primary uh, teaching of Islam is that there is one God who has no partners or associates, who created everything between, uh, who created the heavens and the earth and everything in between. And in this, we hear the term of Muslims using the term Allah as meaning uh, God, or many people say that Allah is the Muslim God. In the Arabic language, Allah simply means the God or the deity. Al, the first two letters of L, is a definite article, and illa just means God, so it's the God. Hence, there are Christians in the Arab world whose native tongue is Arabic in areas such as Palestine, Jordan, Syria, Egypt, uh, Lebanon, Iraq, and they say Allah. So if you were to go to them and say, in their native tongue, they would say Allah. If you were to open up a Bible written in Arabic, it would say Allah. Allah will khalaq us in Allah to It would say that Allah, God, is the one who created the heavens and the earth if you were to read an Arabic Quran. And Muslims believe that this one God is not a separate God from God, from the God that is worshipped by Jews and Christians. This is the or the creator who created the heavens and the earth, and who created uh, the father of humanity as is believed by Jews, Christians, and Muslims, Adam and his spouse. Also, in the Islamic faith, part of the belief of Islam is to believe in all of God's angels, un unseen beings, who work upon the behalf of human beings and creation upon the strict commands of God. And some of those angels which we believe in or have been given their names are also angels that are shared in the Judeo-Christian uh, faith system. Two of those in particular being Gabriel and Michael. Also, we believe in all of God's books. Books that were sent to prophets to help guide humanity correctly. So in the Quran of the revealed books, we are told of the scrolls of Abraham the Torah that was given to Moses, 
the Psalms that was given to David, the Gospels that was given to the Messiah Jesus, son of Mary, and the final of these revealed books believed as Muslims is the Quran. And we also believe in all of God's prophets and, and the prophets that are named in the Bible are also prophets that Muslims believe in, in the prophetic chain as we believe starting with Adam and ending with Muhammad. But the five major prophets of Islam are Noah, Abraham, Moses, the Messiah, Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad. If you were to look at the Ten Commandments, you would see that the basis of the Ten Commandments can be found within the Quran and the prophetic teachings of Prophet Muhammad. Being the most important of those, commandment number one, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. This, is, this similar statement is said in, in our five daily prayers as Muslims, and we say this a minimum of ten times a day. There is no God, there is no Lord, but one God. We say this a minimum of ten times a day within our five daily prayers. Also, the other uh, ethical teachings within the Ten Commandments in the Bible, similar to those things about not covering, covering your neighbor, loving for your neighbor what you love for yourself, not killing an, uh, or taking an innocent life. These fundamental teachings that are in Judaism and Christianity are also in Islam, and for that matter, most of these sacred principles, so these ethical teachings can be found in all of the world's major religions, not just in Judaism or Christianity. For that matter, even the religion which was the forerunner to Judaism, the Zoroastrian faith. And also, relating to these values, <clears throat> and also the democratic society. Let me also tie this in with another uh, misconception. And the misconception is that <coughs> democracy is a product of Judeo-Christian values or Judeo-Christian civilization. If we go back and trace back the, the history of democracy and, and certain democratic values, that were first propagated within society, we would see that these have nothing to do with monotheism as we know it today. If we were to go back to ancient uh, Grecian society, the ancient Greeks, we would see that they did not worship one god, they had a polytheistic society, and that there were other societies that practiced certain forms of democratic uh, systems prior to the modern practice of democracy as we understand it in Western civilization. Approximately 1,500 years ago, in the time of Prophet Muhammad, there was uh, somewhat a democratic society or there was uh, voting that was established in society, there was mutual consultation and also assemblies. In the Arabic language, this concept is referred to in the Quran as majlis. Majlis meaning assembly. The Prophet Muhammad was not a dictator. He would go to his companions, those people who walked with him, and he would have meetings or caucuses where certain issues were discussed and then they would be put up for vote. Also, in addressing this, let me also say that even up to 100 years ago, and we use this term that America is a Judeo-Christian society, if you were to trace back the origin of this term and how it's been used, you would see that a century ago, this term was not used within the political discourse or the social discourse within American society of this being a Judeo-Christian society. Not only was our, the, the, the writer of the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson, a non-Christian, he was an agnostic. But if you were to even trace back American history and the many horrendous things that took place and the marginalization of Jews in this country, you would see that during the time of Hitler coming to his rise, if this were truly seen as a Judeo-Christian country, when there were thousands and thousands of Jews who were fleeing from fascist tyranny and the Nazis, there were thousands upon thousands of Jews who 